29-year-old Kofi Jantua. He came to the United States from Ghana in 98. 5'11", 154 pounds. 23 and 1, 13 knockouts. His last five shows his frustrations with inactivity. It also shows his lone loss. He was leading on the scorecards before Manuel Gomez scored a one-punch knockout. Thirty-year-old Robert Camia came here from Africa too. Now lives and trains in West Palm Beach. Twelve and two, four knockouts. He is three and two in his last five. He was stopped against Shibata Flores. That was three years ago this month. They're scheduled for ten. Joe Miller, your referee. Hey guys, I gave you your dressing. There's Robert Camion, not known as a big puncher at all, but he Ready? feels he is more skilled than Giantua. Both men sparred with Vernon Forrest prior to Vernon's rematch with Mayorga. And Teddy Atlas, Kofi Giantua, you see him right there. He was a real hot shot, making his way up the rankings. Had an impressive knockout win on our air against Daniel Santos, but inactivity and that loss to Gomez, that had him tumbling out of the rankings. That knockout loss to Gomez. Both these fighters have been knocked out one time. Jantua, nothing fancy about him. Very physically strong, tough, determined. Comes at you. Tries to overpower you physically. Usually makes good fights. He's right there. Nothing fancy. Is predictable. Kamya is going to have to be cuter. He's going to be have to be slicker. I don't think he can match up to the strength of Jantua. Look for Camion to try to be the boxer, try to be the slickster. And look for Jantua, being that he's going to have to be the pursuer to use that left hook that he just hurt Camion with and to go to that body, take some of that slickness away from Camion, who I believe physically can't stand in front of Jantua if he's going to have a chance to win tonight. Jantua showing right away, at least in my eyes, that he's a stronger, more physical fighter. And a left hand here. It's been the aggressor in the opening part of this first round. This is where Jantua must keep his hands free when he gets in close with who's supposed to be the slicker guy, Camille. This is where Jantua, when he gets close, wants to use that physical strength and go to the body, take those legs away from Kanye. A lot of similarities with the, both these fighters. They both fought two and a half months ago, and as far as their inactivity, you alluded to it. Before his last fight, Jantua, he was off 15 months. He had one fight in 2001, one fight in 2002. This is his second fight this year, and Kanye was inactive. Before his last fight, off 10 months, and before that, off 14 months. Very similar to Jantua. One fight in 2001, one fight 2002. This is his second fight also in 2003 for Camion. Both fighters unbelievably similar when it comes to ring rust, ring inactivity. And I think it's going to hurt Camion more, Joe, because he depends more on slickness, on skills that you need timing for. Movement, slipping punches, countering. You need timing for that. You need activity for that. Jantua doesn't need that. He depends on strength. And time off doesn't hurt or diminish that as much. And that's exactly what he has shown here in the first round against Camion. Two of the aggressor early on. Look at the old state house along the Arkansas River in Little Rock, Arkansas. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you on Friday Night Fights. Teddy, we're all at fault many times in overhyping guys, but in the case of Jermaine Taylor, is it deservedly so? Well, so far, so good. I mean, he's taken care of everything he's had to. Anytime you have an Olympic bronze medalist, he's pretty good. He's beaten Russians, he's beaten Cubans, he's beaten the top amateurs in the world. Better guys than most guys are gonna fight before they get to 10-round fights. So he's pretty good. He has skills. 
he hasn't been tested yet. Now, there's two reasons for that. One is because the level, even though he's been in there with mid-range guy, it hasn't been that next level. And he's been so good that he's been able to demolish whatever guys he has been in, put in there with. And I think part of that has been his team that has been very smart with the matchmaking. The styles have suited him. I think pretty soon he's going to have to step up and take a deep breath for his own development to get better, to have a challenge, to get some questions answered for himself. I don't know if those questions are going to be answered tonight. We'll find out. Jermaine Taylor, Freddie Cuevas still to come in our main event. This is round number two in the first round, a round dominated by Gentua. Landed 31 out of 79. Kamya only able to connect on nine punches. Kamya is quicker and he's more mobile. He better use that. He's got to use his quickness and try to be as slick and invasive as possible, not stand too long in front of Gentua, who I believe in the first round showed he's stronger. And now Cammy is trying to mix it up with him right on the inside. Doing a good job so far this round, Cammy, but be careful because I think it's the kind of fight that Gentua can make mistakes and still win. I think it's also the kind of fight where Cammy, not as strong as Gentua, can't afford to make too many mistakes and still be on his feet at the end of the night. Kanye makes a mistake and stands just a little too long in front. He might be going to the showers. Jantua can make mistakes. I think he can overcome them. Right now, Jantua showing that he is predictable. He's strong. And he's pleasing. He's there to fight. But he's one-dimensional. It's up to Kanye to take advantage of that. Right hand came in from Kofi Jantua. Much more diversity to Kamya. See, there's a difference between Kamya surviving by moving and getting an even mix, a nice mix of offense with that movement to have a chance to win this fight. That's what he's doing this round. He's getting a good mix of movement, elusiveness, and also offense to keep Jantua Gentua honest and respectful and keep himself ahead with the judges. Daniel landed more punches in the first two minutes of this second round than he landed in the entire first round. Chantua, although strong, showing some of his flaws. One dimensional. And he goes into moments where he lets you outwork him. He waits a little too long. There's Kofi Jantua, only had one fight since February of 2002. That was a first round knockout this past May. So only one round in the last 16 months. This is round number three against Robert Kamya for the 23 and one former world ranked junior middleweight. Referee taking control right away, making sure things do not get out of control. Giving a warning. Joe Miller doing a good job early on. Wrestling now, wrestling. Go. always walking forward. You can always depend on him to be coming in that front door. And right now, Kamik's doing a good job of not letting him get in that door picking him up before he gets there and then moving out just in time. That's the kind of fight Camion needs to fight. A navigated fight, a planned fight, and a disciplined fight if he's going to beat the stronger Gentua. Last two rounds, this round and the last round, he's been able to do that. There's a big right hand from Kofi Gentua. But as we said earlier, Gentua can make mistakes and still win this fight. Camion cannot make mistakes and win this fight. He made a mistake there. He got caught. An uppercut standing in front too long. And he paid the price. Halfway through this third round, left hand lands from Jantua. 
Tanya cannot get greedy. He's got a tough situation. He has to move, but he also has to punch to hold Jan Tua off and to stay ahead in the scorecards where he can win this fight. But the problem is he stays just a little too long, which he did a moment ago. He's going to get hurt by Jan Tua. Jan Tua needs a little time to get off. So Camu must get off and get out before he gives Jan Tua that time to come back. He didn't do it earlier. A lot of pressure, Joe, on Camu. He can be doing so well and winning so much of the round like he's doing right here. But one mistake, and he's behind. Jantu is just stronger. Jantu has a better chin and more physical power. And right here is where Canyon must be careful not stay there too long. Canyon returning fire in the center of the ring. It was a right hand uppercut. Halfway through this third round, the big highlight so far for Kofi Jantua. Kami's not as strong as Jantua, so when he gets inside, he must tie up. Otherwise, this is going to happen. He gets grazed with a right uppercut, catches part of his chin, his legs do a dance, down goes his body. Round number four, interesting development in the course of this summer that both of these fighters were sparring against Vernon Forrest. So they got a look at each other. Both came away extremely confident after seeing each other. But it was Kofi Jantua who said, you know what, I can box or I can slug with this guy. He can't slug with me. Proved that true in the third round. Well, that's exactly right, and that's what we said right from the giddy up. Tanya has to fight, or at least his intentions and his goals have to be to fight a perfect fight. To repeat what I said earlier, Jan Tua can make mistakes, has made plenty of mistakes. He can still win the fight. 10-8 to, uh, to Jan Tua. Get up! Get up! Get up! The inactivity played a very big role in the recent career of Gen 2. As you take a look at Teddy Scorcher, the 10 8 round there in the third round. You know, it's funny that last round, they give it a 10 8 because of the knockdown. But other than that knockdown, it was Kaimu's round. He was able to actually do some things in the last 30 seconds there. Yes, he was. And he was able to do something early before he got caught. He is not as durable as Jantua. Even though you think of Jantua as a guy who walks in, which he is, looking to land big shots. It's important for Jantua. Even though we look at Kami as the slickster, as the guy who needs to use the jab to survive and to have a chance to win, it's important for Jantua to use that jab as he comes in, just to stay like that, just to stabilize the quicker Kami. He has to use that jab as he comes in. If he uses that jab as he comes in, Jantua, can you do that and do that, which is pot shot him and pick spots. It's very important for Jantua. I know he wants to land big shots like that, but he must use the jab. Otherwise, he can fall behind in his fight. And then he have to get a knockdown to win it. You don't want to be in that position or a knockout to win it which can happen for Jan Tua, but you don't want to put yourself behind the eight ball that way. More aggressive round for Robert Kamya. Robert Kamya, he was knocked down in the third round against Kofi Jan Tua. He was the more effective fighter in that fourth round. Round number five. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you on Friday Night Fights from Little Rock, Arkansas. The punches in round four. Camya threw more. 
Gentua landed more. Jermaine Taylor still to come in our main event, but a good look at a couple of 154 pounders here. Gentua with only one loss. There was a time when he was the hot rising guy at junior middleweight, but he tumbled out of those world rankings. Can you outworking Gentua inside? But he has to be careful and respectful of that because he's in the place where Gentua can be dangerous. For the most part, I believe Canyon must live on the outside. Use his quickness. Not get into a battle inside where strength can come into play. Gentua will win that department, win that war. A couple of snapping jabs here in round number five from Gentua. That worked for him early on in this fight. It's very important, I believe, as I said earlier, for Gentua to use that jab when he's in front. Because when he comes forward without that jab, he gets pot shot. He gets picked apart a little bit. But when he comes in with that jab, he makes Tanya respect him. Makes him worry about something. Tanya trying to put his punches together with Gentua against the ropes. This is where Tanya must be careful, though. He had a left hand there. So Tanya can outwork Gentua. He's quicker. And he can be outworking him every second inside. Up until the moment he gets caught with a clean shot. And he visits the canvas like he did earlier. Very important for Kanye to be disciplined and be in control of his fighting spirit. He wants to fight a very regulated, controlled fight. But he stays there too long. Even though he's acting like a fighter, showing that fire, showing that heart. Showing that determination. He stays there There's too long. There's a short right hand, He Teddy. stays there too long. He's going to get caught. There it was. You can tell with the inside work, the pop with Jantua compared to the punches thrown by Canyon. See, the one thing with Jantua, we look at the advantage. He's stronger. But the disadvantage, he's slower. He takes longer to get his shots off. And that is what Canyon has been doing a good job with. He can get his shots off like now. First, and he can get out before the slower Chantua comes back. Over the top with a right hand here in round number five. <laughs> Bottom right hand corner, you're going to see Camion standing there with that left hand out there too long. He gets caught with a good straight right hand. But that's the problem there for Chantua. It was a good straight right hand, but only one shot. And Cagney was able to survive it. And here in the sixth round, both men exchanging in the middle of the ring. Cagney does a much better job of being busy. More active, putting punches together. Jantua, one punch at a time for the most part. The punches are much harder, but less frequent. And Teddy, to your point, in that last round, Kamya threw 114 punches to Jantua's 55. But Jantua outlanded him 21 to 15, and that's been a trend the past couple of rounds. Teddy Atlas's scorecard through five rounds, 47-47. So Kamya able to overcome that knockdown in round number three, halfway through this scheduled 10 rounder. And what you just talked about, Joe, is a good point for the viewers to watch as far as what's going to happen if this goes the distance with the scorecards. It can make for an interesting and maybe a controversial scorecard. One guy throwing more, the other guy throwing less, but harder punches. Short left hand again. See, this is where Cam, you must be careful. Get his punches off and then get out. Not stay there, not wait for the receipt. As you can see, Gentoo gives you plenty of opportunities to figure him out. He's always coming one way. He can do something about that. Also, he gives you plenty of opportunities to outwork him. Not a busy fighter, Gentoo. And even though he scored a knockdown in the third round of this fight, Canyon's showing more confidence now. 
A lot of confidence after landing those two right hands. And Kofi Jantua tries to play it off. So Jantua might have to start putting punches together, not be able to depend on one shot doing it the way it, the way it happened in the third round. He might start having to put together two and three on Kamya if he's going to get him out of there. And the way the fight's going, the way Jantua fights, the way Kamya fights, Jantua might have to get him out of there, at least on the floor again, to win the fight. Because it's the kind of fight, if it's a decision, it could be in the favor of Kamya because of his style. Another strong round for Robert Kamya. Corner at the end of the round, a little bit of a late punch. The referee jumps right in, gives a warning to Jantua that you cannot punch after the bell. Not on purpose by Jantua, Joe. You know, that was just the thing. The punches were started, the bell went, and it was just one of those things. And you can see here referee Joe Miller addressing the situation as the corner. No, no, no. Get him. No, no. You ready to go? Get up. The, the corner of Robert Camio want to take as much time as they could there in between rounds after the foul. See, that's smart corner work. And sometimes, just like a coach in baseball or football or basketball, can make the difference with the players. That's where a good corner can make the difference. Former world champion, junior welterweight champion, Johnny Bumpers, and the other team members there in the corner, getting some extra time, knowing that they had a situation where they could take advantage of it, could get some extra time for Camio. And they got it. So round number seven, our opening fight here on Friday Night Fights, and it has turned into a very interesting story. Kofi Jantua scored a knockdown in the third round. But since then, good work from Robert Kamya, and he's actually taken the lead on Teddy Atlas's scorecard. There goes the jab of Jantua that has been sporadic. Because he's always looking to walk in. And he's the kind of fighter that he doesn't punch until he gets into a comfort zone, until close. And when he doesn't come in behind that jab, he allows you to get off first. He allows you to pick him up coming in. And Kamya, at least on my scorecard, has carried a lot of rounds because of that. Much easier fight for Jantua, much more effective when he uses his jab. I think that word effective is going to be the key, Teddy, with these judges ringside because the percentages have been low for Kamya. The better power shots have been landed from Jantua. But it has been Kamya who has been the aggressor in these middle rounds. And that word effective, you're right, Joe, is important. Because just look at the two guys. You don't need me to tell you. Look at the size difference. Look at the physiques. The bigger, stronger man is Jantua. But he's not able to be effective with that strength even here inside. He gets tied up. He gets smothered. A lot of times he smothers himself inside. He can't use that big body. Good inside work from Jantua. Backs it up with a right hand. Now again, good shots by Jantua. Brings out two points. One, he needs to put them together. Kamya taking the shot better now. Needs to put them together. Can't depend on that one shot. It was a good uppercut by Jantua, but only one shot. Also, it brings to thought what the judges are going to think at the end of rounds. A lot of the rounds can be controlled by Kamya, and then all of a sudden spots like this. With, and that's the spot. A good right hand, and down goes Kamya. Second time tonight that a right hand has floored Robert Kamya. The power of Kofi Jantua. Kamya's thinking about whether or not he's getting up. He's right not now. getting up. How about that? Two impressive displays of power from Jantua in the course of these seven rounds, and the second one wins him the fight. 255 of round number seven. As we said early, Joe, the kind of fight where Jantua can be losing rounds, making mistakes, but he can turn it around, bam! Just like that. And Kamya can be doing well, but he can make one mistake and he can be going to the showers early. Well, he made a mistake. 